Hello everyone, it's the Silverite again, here with another basics tutorial. This one will be on uh, simple jumping in 3D. And note, this is not jumping onto an object or something. Uh, that's quite a bit more complicated. But hopefully, if you understand this method uh, quite thoroughly, then it shouldn't be too hard for you to figure out how to jump on an object. But right now, we're just going to be jumping up and down. So the whole idea is we're going to need to create artificial gravity. Well. All gravities are artificial, but we're not going to be using normal game makers set gravity because that is moving up and down on the y axis, or rather, into a direction. So it doesn't actually affect the 3D plane, which is what we're going to want to do. So, first, let's start out with a new object, go into the creation event, create some code. Okay, so as usual, to start off any game, we're going to go D3D start, any 3D game anyway. We're going to set some variables. So first we're going to set Z and it's going to equal our height. So this will be our new Z height on the well, 3D axis. So this is what we're going to be using to jump up and down. That'll equal our height. So now we're also going to want Z speed. This will equal how fast we're going up or down if we are jumping. And then we have jump, which will just equal 0 or 1. Uh, based on if we're jumping or on the ground. So if it's zero, that means we're on the ground. And if it equals one, that means we're already jumping and therefore we cannot jump again, unless you want to do a double jump thing. But right now we won't do that. Also, might as well do some lighting here. Um, light enable. Gotta enable it globally first. Oh no, wait. This is just enabling a certain light. And then... I'll set all lights to be on. There we go. Enable lighting globally. So now let's set a point for light. Let define point. So here once again the ID for the lights. Hopefully you remember the how I did the lighting in the last video. Or not the last one. Anyway. So we have X Y Z range. I will set it to my camera position later on. But for right now, I'm just going to set it there. Actually, I'll just copy this. Go into my draw event. I'm just pretty much setting up stuff here. I haven't actually done anything jump yet except for initialize those variables. So now, E3D set projection. It's not giving me any hints. No. Okay. Well, I'll just have to type it in. Okay. X from would be X plus 25. I'm going to have it a little bit off to the side here. That way we get the 3D effect. And Y from. Y plus 100. And then Z plus 50. So this is once again where we're looking from. This is the camera. And then now where we're looking towards is just myself. So X y z so now once again the zero zero one at the end so there we go we've set up our camera looking at well so far empty space so let's draw some stuff actually wait, i'm gonna reset the lighting here first so it'll equal same thing that where the camera was looking from we just want to leave it at the exact same thing so that the lighting is coming right from the camera which gives us a pretty good lighting for a beginner game. You're not going to set like point lights around like lampstands or something. Anyway, so now let's draw a floor. And going to set it to the usual, the exact same size as the room. And then, so room width followed by room height. And then at the zero, so that it is on the floor. Background, get texture. There we go. So that it'll draw a texture onto our floor. And then uh, five by five. How many times the texture is repeated on the ground, uh, on the surface. Okay, also, uh, set color. Because once again, the default color is black, which would draw everything as black. We don't want that. We want it to be white. 
Yeah, much better. Now also for the floor, how lighting works is it lights up polygons by how close it is to any one corner of the triangle. So, and the floor is so big that the corners are on the very edge, right? And since we're not going to be going near the very edge, lighting looks really weird. So, all right, let's not draw. It's D3D. There we go. Uh -huh. So we have to equal lighting false, otherwise it'll look weird. But we can turn it on right after, so it'll still affect the box that we're going to draw. Draw block. Okay, this time player is block, but it doesn't really matter. So here we go. X minus 5 again, meaning that the entire thing will be exactly 10 by 10 by 10. Y minus 5, and then Z. Once again, not going to do Z minus 5 because that would put us beneath the floor, which we don't want. So let's see here. And next one we say X plus 5, Y plus 5, and Z plus 50. Or no, no, sorry, not 50, 10. There we go. So now for the Texid, minus 1 to leave it white, and then 1, one for the repeat. And we didn't have to do the steps this time because you can't exactly add more detail to a box. Well, you could, but no, no, not yeah, not here. <laughs> it won't actually do anything. So we have all the drawing set up so far. It should work. Oh yeah, except for, of course, I need to add a texture. I need to call it text. And I'll just load in a random grass background, maybe. Add a room. Make it my good old HD size put our object somewhere in there and there we go so now let's I guess just add event step we're gonna add in the actual jump code okay so if key or check except for pressed because we don't want to be able to hold it down and keep hopping like a bunny I mean you could do that but not very fun. Um, EK space. Assuming we're on it, we're wanting to use the space button as our jumping button. So now we're going to use and and. So this means if we're if we just press space and jump equals zero. Okay, so that means that we're already on the ground. Then we want jump to equal one. So that means that we're jumping and z speed to equal eight. So, okay, so z speed, this will be the speed in which we start going up. So change this for different height speeds, right? For like how high you're gonna go. So now we have jumping set. So we can init initialize it properly. So now if jump equals one, then we're going to want to actually have us jumping up and down. So first thing we're gonna do is z, plus equals z speed. So this means that now z is going to be getting bigger as we jump. So, eh, yeah. It, it'll, it'll just keep getting bigger. But the problem is, is that we don't want to keep moving up at the same speed, because that isn't jumping. That's flying. So now, z speed has to minus equal 0 0.5 every time. So this means z speed which is 8, will keep getting smaller every time by 0 0.5, meaning that I'll take 16 steps for it to reach 0. And then it'll start getting, like, going into the minus, going down, meaning that Z will start um, decreasing, and it'll decrease exponentially. So then, then it'll keep going down and increasing speed until it goes right through the floor, and it'll keep going. So we need to stop it at some point. So that point will be the floor. So if z is smaller than or equal to 0, right, because we have to assume that it, it probably won't stop exactly at 0. It could be, a little bit bef could be a little bit below. So we have to account for that. So then um, we just reset everything to 0, really. z equals 0, just in case it was a little bit below. z speed equals zero and jump equals zero so that resets the entire jumping process 
So there we go. That is the simplest jumping script I could do for you guys. It's fairly simple and it, it's pretty much just creating gravity. So this 0 0.5 here is the speed of your gravity. So if you want to increase that or decrease that, that'll just change your gravity strength. So that's pretty much it. Let's play it and see how it looks. And there we have it. A little jumping block in the middle of a grassy field. Yay. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and hope you understood it. It was fairly simple, I, I should think. So have fun making your little guy jump around on the floor for no particular reason. <laughs> anyway, goodbye.